if you watch the corporation, one of the first things that they did was they created this like bioorganism that would eat up oil and they said that you couldn't patent life. If you want to talk about really scary, how about human tissue can be taken for human animal embryo experiments without consent? And that's been going on for decades. Yeah. He's talking about more gallons. Uh -huh. Some of that's real, a lot of it's disinfo. Oh, I've heard a lot. Yeah, exactly. Some of that's real, a lot of it. Thank you, Mr. Jones, because come on. We got to live in the real world here. Here, people are about to take squalene and mercury shots for the piggy flu. That isn't even the piggy flu. I'm a little more concerned with that. Something that's three types of flu: H5N1, H1N1, human flu virus. And then people say, "Well, it looks like it could be made in a lab," and they try to tell you that pigs gave it to us, but then humans are found with it before the pigs, and then they blame pigs in Canada. It doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? I'm more concerned with that, sir. We're going to talk to Dan, Timothy, and more. It's the Info Warrior with Jason Burmis, prisonplanet.tv, InfoWars.com. Are you concerned for the safety of your loved ones? Listen closely to this message from Pepperspray.com. Every 22 seconds a violent crime is committed. America has changed, and your personal safety is your first priority. Be smart. Be safe. Trust Pepper Spray instead of your luck. Pepperspray.com is the only website you'll ever need for all of your non-lethal self-defense supplies. Pepperspray.com carries one of the largest assortments of pepper spray and personal safety products on the web. From big to small, we have it all. Pepper Spray, mace, animal repellents, stun guns, and tasers. Pepperspray.com also carries a large assortment of products for personal, home, child, and pet safety. Enter SAFE in the coupon box and you'll receive a special discount off of your order. So what are you waiting for? Go to Pepperspray.com. That's Pepperspray.com. Or call 1-800-908-9988 today. going to go back to your calls in just a moment, but I do want to read this because I think this is very important. This is very relevant, and it's on the topic of human engineering, chimeras. If you don't know what a chimera is, it's a cross species of a human and another life entity. I don't even want to say another animal. Oh, this is human animal embryos. I mean, this is, this is as wild as it gets. But they have a lot of different things out there. Uh, I know Jones has talked about the HIV uh, virus that Monsanto has grown in corn and other experiments like this. But check this out. A lot of people donate their bodies or their fluids to science and they go do this. They expect that it's going to be used in research to help others. Well, not anymore. New rules coming into force next month will give scientists working on stem cell research access to samples of blood and tissues collected by NHS hospitals during biopsies and treatments, as well as to giant tissue banks, which built up stores of material before the legislation was introduced. And they're not going to have, well, they have to try to find the person, but they don't necessarily have to get their permission. If they can't contact them, they will be using this tissue in hybrid embryos for stem cell research of humans and animals. While scientists will have to try to gain explicit consent before using these cells from such stores, if the samples were collected before October 1st and the doctor cannot be, or uh, the donor cannot be tracked down, the experiments will be allowed to go ahead regardless. Joyce Robbins, uh, the co-director of the pressure group uh, Patient Concern, warned against this, of course. This is absolutely frightening. People who have donated for medical research may well not agree with human-animal hybrids, which are one of the most controversial ideas out there. Can you imagine being born into this world as a scientific experiment? And because you are 1% chimpanzee or 1% pig or 1% turtle, I mean, I can go on. All of a sudden, you're not a human being. You're just a plaything for an experiment. Scientists know how hard it would be to con get consent for these kind of experiments. This is an attempt to get around those obstacles and also really an attempt to bring this out into the public because this has already been going on for quite some time behind closed doors. It's time to grow up, get the thumbs out of our mouth, get out of the fetal position, and realize how spooky our world is. Get that thing off there. That's one of those little hoaxers. I don't want to see that thing. That's not a real chimera. There are real chimeras if you if you look for it. It's C-H-I-M-E-R-A if you want to know, but you don't want the rock band. I have seen Chimera Live, by the way. Rough crowd. Rough crowd. Uh, let's see. It also points out 
and that this was put into such a large bill that the amendment on body tissue was passed almost unnoticed. Professor Jones said he was not reassured by insistence from regulators that efforts would be made to trace donors. A study of couples, now check this out, a study of couples who stored human embryos at fertility clinics found that 50% could not be tracked down after just five years. Hmm, I wonder where their stuff's go. Hmm, you pay a lot of money to have your embryos stored in case you want to have children later in life or you possibly have a terminal illness and you would like your name to live on, 50% gone. Hmm, I wonder if they could be already doing these experiments. Now they're just making it legal. Now they're just bringing it out into the public. All right, let's hit some more callers. Let's go to Dan in Colorado. Dan, you're on the line. Dan, yes? Can you hear me? We, yes, sir. All right. It's always a pleasure to talk to a uh, fellow terrorist. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to say, wanted to comment that I, I'm, I'm thinking that the reason they're keeping the numbers down uh, in the mainstream media on the protest is possibly because they're getting scared. They're starting to realize that the sleeping giant is awakening, <clears throat> and they don't want other people out there to realize this. And then um, a question for you that I've been wanting to ask you for a while there, Jason, is uh, have you heard of the Continental Congress? And if you have, what is your thoughts on it? Is the Continental Congress basically the People's Congress where we can have a, uh, what is it, a, uh, basically amend the Constitution through a, what is it called? Uh, no, it's not a con-con. Okay, the Continental con -con. Congress of 09, it is where we're basically, all the states are going to send three delegates from each state to, uh, uh, oh, shoot, I, the, the name slips me, like Pennsylvania, I think it is, mm -hmm. where the original one happened. And we're basically going to lay out some solutions to be able to take back our government. A we the people, peaceful movement to take back the government. You can check well, it well, out. I hope on, it works uh, out. Yeah, go ahead. Give out the website. Yeah, check it out on uh, GiveMeLiberty.org. And I was, I've always, always wondered what you and Alex have always thought about that because well, Bad Narek is a part of it. Uh, Bob Schultz is a part of it. It's not you know, I, I think that stuff is good because we do have those people on here. But at the same time, it's almost like. You know, the Libertarian Party, how far have they been able to get her? The, even the Green Party, uh, which latches onto a lot of belief systems that I'm not a part of, how far have they been able to get? They, I, I mean, I voted for a Green Party. I just don't know if that is the solution, that is the answer. I agree we all have to work together and we have to come together to do so. But I think it's really going to take some more individual leaders and maybe not necessarily everybody having to group together and get under one banner. I thank you for the call. And not that that's a bad thing. Because I think it is positive when you see this many people out in D.C. in full force against what's happening in Washington. I mean, the cap and trade is so disturbing and disgusting. It's appalling to me that it's gotten as far as it has. And this health care bill as well. End of America. Head of the U.N. Security Council, Lord Barack Obama. Timothy in D.C. Timothy, you're on the line. Yes, sir. Um, I don't mean to pull you off topic, but I, I'm still in D.C. I came up here from Florida mm -hmm. to attend the march. And uh, I was very upset about these numbers. And I was at the march, and they told us uh, before it even started that uh, everyone was to be off the mall. They said that, they didn't, that the city would not give them a permit to be on the mall. So they told everyone to get off the mall. So what that did is that pushed all the crowds up underneath the trees to be hidden. You had to be on the sidewalks or underneath the trees, in the bushes, but you could not be in the center of the mall. Now, they still did, did go up in the mall area in the right there where we're at, at the west west of the Capitol. Mm -hmm. But in the middle of the mall, they had the cops running around there getting everybody off the grass. And you had to get up on the sidewalk and, and under the bushes. And, and, you know, and I think that was just so the, it would doctor the photos. It wouldn't let everyone well, know well, what's how your many take? People how many people? There? How many people do you think were there? And then really give me a, a feel or a vibe for the the type of people well, that you were running into. Well, I, I was there. I, I was with the Florida group, and we were at the first of the the line. Supposedly, mm -hmm. Georgia was in front of us. And when we got there, when I got there, I was like, there. I actually have my photos on the TV here. I was like right up next to the stage, and. When I got to the stage, there were still four or five rows of people in front of me, and there was picture. They had two video camera screens that were showing where we started up next to the, you know, two miles down the road there at the White House, mm -hmm. Freedom Plaza, and the crowd looked like it had never even left Freedom Plaza. 
I mean, when I got there, I was one of the first ones there, and the crowd looked like the same two miles away. I mean, it looked like it hadn't even diminished so at all. So do you think more than two million? I mean, uh, Daily Mail is uh, well, saying you know, around I, two million. I am not, uh, you know, I can't tell you how many people were there. I don't have that um, mm. experience. However, I did talk to one of the motorcycle officers, and he told me that it was one of the largest crowds he had ever seen there. Um and you know that's all I got to go on. And they de- and then the uh, they did get up there and they said ABC said one point five million. Uh, but then the ABC here on the internet is saying no, we never said that. So well, let's see if we yeah. can get the clip up on YouTube. It will. I'm sure it'll be disputed either way. I thank you for the call. You know, my concern is you know not everybody's Timothy in D.C. A lot of people out there really just don't know what's going on. They're towing party lines. They're there because they're Republicans. What I saw at the Tea Parties from before, but I am seeing more and more people being upset, and you can see that also with the town hall meetings and people just going off on people like Barney Frank and other propagandists out there.